In 2012, I just got back from my second tour in Iraq. It was 12 months. And uh, two months into that tour, I got a Dear John email from a longtime girlfriend that said, I can't handle this anymore, I'm out. So I had 10 more months to go and try to not think about that shit every fucking day. Spoiler alert, I thought about that shit every fucking day. So I get back home and I'm stationed in San Diego and for a whole year I just decided I'm done with relationships, I'm done with dating, I don't wanna meet anyone new. Fuck women, fuck men, fuck whoever, but not fucking anyone. So naturally, my buddies were concerned for me because I was just stuck up, held up in my 600 square foot apartment, just drinking myself to sleep, watching the strangest of porn that you can imagine. Q January 24th of that year, which happened to be my birthday. Some good buddies of mine that I went to college with, shout out to January 24th, some good buddies of mine that I went to college with and some of my military buddies that were like, we've had enough of this stuff, we're not gonna let you just crumble away in your apartment being alone, using your tears as lube for masturbation. We're done with that. We're done with that, Shane, we love you, we care about you. So we're gonna take you out. And in San Diego, the streets are, are just riddled with bars as far as the eye can see, but no, they wanted to go all the way out to Newport Beach, Orange County, which is two hours away from San Diego. So they all drove down. They spent the night at my place, and the next afternoon, we all drove up to what Newport Beach would consider a dive bar, which anywhere else in the country is just a regular nice bar. And I was already pissed. I didn't want to be out. I felt like they were forcing a connection on me. They wanted me to just have a random hookup or something like that. And I was just, I was still too raw. I didn't want any of that. And these are supposed to be my good friends. This is my wolf pack. Oh. <laughs> I knew they had a hidden agenda. I knew that they just wanted to go out and be in a new environment where they can see something that they have never seen before and maybe latch on to something. And I wasn't with that. Remember, strange porn. So. The two hour drive, I'm not driving, I'm in the back. A fifth of whiskey, going for it, ah! Right, we get to the bar, it's packed, there's people on the small dance floor, there's a patio outside, chain smoking people, all that stuff. My buddies, who I thought were there for me, they were there to support me, to uplift me. As soon as we cross into the threshold of the bar, they just fucking disappear. They just spread out and it's every man for himself. So what do I do? At that point in my life, I was a chain smoker. I head right out to the patio, and the patio looks right into the bar. You can see all the action. And I'm out there just lighting them up, smoking them, lighting another one before I finish one, flicking them, just fucking, and just cursing everyone that could be potentially in love in this place. Any kind of encounter that can lead to something positive. I'm like, fuck you, that's not gonna last. Fuck you, I saw him talking to another woman when you went to the bathroom, just, just fucking, just shitting on everything in there that had the chance of positivity. And I was being fucking hilarious about it too. <laughs> right, and this is how I know, because just within earshot, I keep, I keep hearing a woman just giggling. Giggling with every little insult, with every roast joke I threw out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I just kept hearing all that, right? And I look over and this just, this, this, there's, she's, she's just glowing. This is just the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, right? I look over at her, she's slapping her knee because I'm fucking funny. Ah. But then our eyes connect and she did that thing like most of us do when we're just kind of just blankly staring off into the distance and then some random stranger locks eyes with you, you're just like, oh no, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> she looked away from me and I thought, well, it is what it is, I don't deserve good things. That's for someone else. Cut two, I'm in the bar, I'm leaning up against the bar. One of my buddies is standing in front of me. He's a short Nigerian man, his name is Frank. 
Unfortunately, he's a cop in San Francisco now. Not, uh, not for him, but unfortunate for the people of San Francisco, because he's a terrible fucking dude. He really is. We used to do lines of coke on urinals back in the day. But here's the thing. Frank is standing right in front of me, and he's about this tall. And that woman that I spoke of earlier goes walking past the bar, and I'm not paying attention, but he reaches up and grabs my chin and directs it towards her. And he's like, dibs, dibs on her. I was like, Frank, you're a terrible person, so I just moved him out the way. <laughs> so I walk him, go up to, I, I see him go up to her, and he tries to like offer her a beer. He's all jovial, and the look on her face is just like, mm-mm. And he comes back with his hat in his hand, very distraught. I loved it. I loved it, right? Cut to an hour later, I'm back on the patio, chain smoking, like I do, in my element. And at this point in time, I'm, I'm getting everybody going, baby. I'm making the whole fucking patio laugh, man. I'm killing that shit. And there was one woman in the group of people I was talking to that was like, hold that thought. I got a friend that needs to fucking hear this shit. She leaves, she comes back. It's the same girl. The girl that was glowing, the girl that was laughing at everything I was saying before, the girl that hurt one of my friend's feeling, that made me like her even more. <laughs> right? And this time, she's going for it. We're making eye contact, I'm making her laugh, this, that, and the other. My boy Frank steps in again, tries to take another shot. This time she turns him down in front of the whole group. That's when I knew. She's the one. <laughs> she's the fucking one. Somehow, me and this woman, she's all, I'm biracial, she's also a biracial angel. We're both <laughs> standing there in this loud bar, people yelling, fighting, possibly fucking, all that shit, all this commotion is going on, and me and this woman are standing there having a very serious and in-depth talk about the, the plight of biracial children in America. Also, we were a little high because we were just sharing a joint back and forth, <laughs> right? Time's going by, right? Time's going by. All of a sudden, everybody knows this. You're in a bar, the lights come on, boom. What's that mean? Last call. Shout out to my alcoholics. Last call, <laughs> right? Last call. So I just do the, uh, I've been killing it all night. I want to reach out and have something good happen to me, but I freeze. And she's like, well, it's been good talking to you. I had a really good night. And I go, yeah. That's it. <laughs> so she goes, I guess, uh, I guess I'll see you around. And I go, you right? And she takes a couple steps away. You weren't gonna ask for my number, were you? That's what she says to me. And I'm just like, nah, I was. I was just gonna follow you to your car in the parking lot first. <laughs> And she's like, what? I was like, no, I mean, it's not like that. I mean, I was going to follow you to your car, but you were going to be aware of it. Whatever. I just handed her my phone. I was like, please. I, just, I, gave, I, just held, I held my phone out. Please. Please. And she takes, <laughs> she takes my phone, puts her number in, and she gives it back to me. But before I put it in my pocket, she snatches it back from me, and she takes a selfie of her face, and then she gives it to me. And she's like, you better fucking call me. It took me two weeks to fucking call her back. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. But I went home that night. And by home, I mean my buddy Frank, the short Nigerian San Francisco cop now. And it's me and five of my best friends were all laying up in his room. And I was sleeping on his, uh, his, his Bowflex bench, right? That was just a coat rack at this point. And everybody's passing out, all the dudes are, we're, we're talking shit about, we got this number, that number, this number. And I was just silent the whole time, all my friends were just talking up about how they were gonna close the deal with all these women. I was just quiet because I was in my head. I couldn't stop thinking about that girl. I kept looking at the picture on my phone thinking like, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you. Two weeks later, I finally called her up. And we celebrated our seven-year wedding anniversary like a couple months ago. 